Hello and welcome to this fifth video in this series. If you are watching this video, it means probably that you've decided you'd like to give ResearchGate a try. You've weighed up the pros and the cons and now you're looking to set up your account. So in this video, we'll take you through that process step by step. So if you do decide to use ResearchGate, it's important that you set up your profile well, and that will make sure that the algorithms work well to give you uh, the information that is most relevant to you. Setting up the account uh, requires you to navigate the system in English. Uh, all of the features and buttons are in English. But for the input, the information that you share, uh, there are options for you to put in any language that you wish. My advice is to give it a go, set up your account, give it a little bit of time to see if it's, uh, if it's useful for you. Uh, but if not, there's always an option just to delete your account and it will remove all of your information. So to get started, you'll need to go to researchgate.net and find the join for free button. There'll be a few places where you'll find it and it will look something like this. When you go there, you'll be asked to what type of researcher you are. So if you're an academic or a student or you're not a researcher and you just like to be uh, have access to different research, I uh, would just choose the option that is best for you. I assume that most people watching this video are going to be uh, academics. Next, you'll be asked some background information, your institution and department, your name, and you'll need an institutional email. So it will be a .ac.jp in Japan or .edu in, in a different, uh, different countries. But uh, ResearchGate does require this institutional email. That's what makes it a little bit different to an everyday social media account. It's not open to just anybody. And there is a little bit more accountability in profiles. So there's less likelihood of fake accounts and spam accounts, although we can't completely get rid of those. Uh, once you set up your password and you agree to the serve terms of service and the privacy policy, then you can get started building your profile. So your profile page or your home page is what others will see when they go to uh, look at your account. When you go to the page yourself, you'll see this edit button in many different places. So when you click on those edit buttons, that's when you'll be able to uh, personalize the different information on your profile page. So my advice again, ResearchGate works all on algorithms. So the more detail that you give, the more effective it's going to be, the better information that you're going to get. You're going to get connected to research and researchers who are connected to you in some way. So you might want to begin by editing your personal information. So for me, I have my, uh, my uh, ac academic, my education background, the country I'm in, and I have a link to a website that I manage. And what people will also see is some information about you that you can control. So there's an introduction where you can write a little bit of information. You can do that in English or Japanese or both. You can add your disciplines and your skills and expertise. So again, you can add these uh, in English or Japanese. What I'd suggest is even if you do add in Japanese is to also add in English. Uh, and these in particular are very important because, for example, I have listed academic writing as one of my skills or one of my areas of, of research. So that means I'm more likely to be connected to research, other research on academic writing and other researchers who share this skill. So these in particular, some researchers have many, many, many listed and if if you would like to do that, 
um, that's fine. Uh, but my suggestion is that you think a little carefully about really the specific uh, types of information that you want to get access to. Uh, you can list your languages and again you'll be more uh, likely to see research in those languages. If you have other accounts that you would like to share with other researchers there's also an option for you to add uh, different other social networks as well. So the next step would be to add your affiliations. So for me, I have my current employer. You can also go back and actually, I also have uh, other affiliations, places I've worked at in the past. Uh, this again will help you connect with other people in your institution. And if you list the faculty as well, that's going to show other people what field that you're interested in. You can also add the affiliations you have to universities through your own education. So undergraduate or postgraduate education you can add here. And again, it's going to show people who you're connected to, but it's also going to tell the algorithms who are the people that you have worked with uh, in the past. So this is something that has been added relatively recently to ResearchGate and that is your journal roles. So for example, for me, I'm a peer reviewer and I've listed these journals. Now what that means is that other researchers who are also connected to those uh, journals and also other research that's published in these journals are more likely to come my way. Uh, if you're an editor or you have different roles, you can also add those. So uh, again, it's like an, a huge network and we're trying to just build some connections. Who are we connected to? Uh, in what way? And uh, this will make ResearchGate's uh, information, uh, the information that it sends to us much more specific to our needs. Now, it's not perfect. Um, but I think the more information we give, the more helpful it is. So again, with this journal roles, it's quite new. So that it is likely that more or different uh, um, information will also be added to ResearchGate uh, in the coming years. So whenever you see this edit button, that's what you want to look out for and to add as much information as you can that you, of course, are comfortable sharing. Now, another thing you can do is to add your lab and your lab members and your advisors. Again, this will help the uh, ResearchGate, but also ResearchGate users to know who you are connected to. So I'm in the social sciences, so I don't work uh, within a lab, so I don't have this information. But uh, if you work in a lab, I think this might be a good, uh, good information to share. So as I said, there's lots of different information that can be shared on ResearchGate and this might uh, change and it might grow uh, in the coming years. But uh, what you, some options you have currently, you can add grants that you've received, uh, awards. Uh, if you're members, a member of a, a academic society, this will probably be quite a good uh, thing to list because it will show other people who are in the same uh, society and uh, other links to other information. So if you have an ORCID uh, ID, which most people do now to be published in the international journals, then you can share that information there too. So once again, my advice is to take a little bit of time, even after you've input your information, give it a chance for the algorithms to work and for other people to get to see you and to get to know you. Uh, having an online presence is becoming um, you know, a real necessity for many researchers. Uh, so it, perhaps this is going to be something uh, important in the future. ResearchGate is just one of these ways to make ourselves known uh, beyond our, our universities and beyond our own countries. But this setting up your account really is the first step. And as I talked about in an earlier video, there are really three functions of 
academic social networks, that is sharing research, uh, finding other people's research and networking with others. So in our next three videos, uh, so uh, on to six, seven and eight, these uh, videos will focus on how to really use ResearchGate uh, effectively for those three purposes. So I hope to see you in the next video where we look at how you can use ResearchGate to share your research more widely.